Welcome to EFT MBA Mastering Business Acumen with the help of EFT business experts. Learn the marketing, mindset, and skill set you need to create the EFT coaching practice of your dreams. Visit www.eftmba.com for more information. And now, here's the EFT training team that embodies the art and science of EFT, Alina Frank and Dr. Craig Wiener. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, so I, I'm Alina Frank, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Craig Wiener, and we are EFT MBA, and we are also EFT Tapping Training. And today's show, you know, when I when I look back and uh, of all the fantastic shows, and we've been getting amazing feedback from people that have been tuning in to our live show, to the podcast, and they get updated with our newsletter, Um when we when we look back on the on the coming shows and we sat there and we listed the ones that we wanted to do when i when i looked at today's topic i was i said to my i said to Craig like really we, we haven't done this yet like this is so obvious um so i'm really glad we're we're finally just going to do the show um uh, we've said it in a variety of, of different ways we've taught classes uh, about how to heal from some of this these conflicts but so let's just get right into it. There's a lot of information, which you know if you've been tuning in regularly, we stick to our word that this show is 30 minutes because we know your time is valuable. We want to give you the heart and the chunk and the, the meat of the matter so you can go off and then put it into practice. So, Craig, what are we talking about today? The name of today's show is Your EFT Practice is a Spiritual Practice. And you know what? I don't know um, whether some people would find that challenging or really more of an inspiration. What I do think, however, is kind of the next step or the next sentence that comes after that is, okay, I can see that my EFT practice is a spiritual practice, although we're going to go into that if there are any challenges with that. The next question becomes, if my EFT practice is a business, is an EFT business, that means I need to be profitable and make money at that and now, wait a minute, now we're mixing EFT practice, EFT business, spiritual practice, and money, and that's where people start to get into some kind of dilemmas and problems oh, there. Oh, yeah. You, have you seen that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, why is a spiritual practice and money, why is that such a, such a sticky wicket, would you say? What, you know, do people learn things along the way that have those juxtaposed and opposite? What are some of the things you think or you've heard about that? Yeah, so um, you know, sometimes it's a it's it's just ingrained, imprinted, writing on the wall. It's our biblical references to money, like that the money is the root of all evil. Um, hearing that money and spirituality just don't mix. Some people actually have come to me to work on this issue that feel that in a past life they took a vow of uh, of poverty if they were a spiritual teacher, if they were a monk or a nun, and they took this oath of poverty. Um, there's also the reference of that it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Ouch. Um yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Go actually look at the, look at that and read through it completely and you'll see that it it's actually the way that we that we learned it at least in the US um it it's it's really very different than than the way that it's written out here, but this is what we this is what we've heard and what we've learned. Uh the other thing that that I hear from uh clients and some of our students is that you know you're a spiritual being and you always have to be of service and that service means offering oneself to others at no cost or very little cost and then something that we hear repeatedly is you just can't put a price on healing right it's 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 something that is a that is a gift it's a, it's something that you are to give away yeah, and you know what, there's just, um, you know, I mean, we think with so many historical religions of, of, you know, Christianity and Buddhism and so many things, there is this, um, in a sense, a gift from the universe, a gift from God that should flow through us, and, and our interpretation 
is that all is in that selflessness, that there should be no receiving, um, and, and it just um, can be confusing, and it can yeah. be hard to wrap one's head and heart and hands around, you know, some mm-hmm. of these ideas. Um, now, let's just say, for example, that um, folks listening or, or practitioners, and you know what, they don't really buy into that. Okay, so so I understand that um, that I need to be reimbursed for my time and my energy and my education and my services, and um, and I'm okay with that. I think I, I mm-hmm. think I'm pretty good with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet, subtly, underneath that, well, I'm okay with that. Things show up in their practice that say, mm-hmm. hmm, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm not 100% congruent with that because I keep seeing and attracting clients that can't afford my fees. Right. And just most of the time, I feel like I'm always bargaining or giving away or creating scholarships or bartering, but I just seem to attract people that can't pay my fees a lot, and it's an issue mm-hmm. for my business. Right. Or, for example... Um, you know, practitioners that look around and they hear what other um, equivalent EFT practitioners are charging and their fees are way less, right? So in other words, you're setting up your fees that are much lower than, you know, equally competent practitioners around you and going, why do I feel like I always need to do that or why am I rationalizing that? Or perhaps... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to add one thing. Please. I've actually I have actually seen it where someone has looked around and has seen that people are charging less and I ask them okay so what is what are you charging and I can't believe how little they're charging and they're still looking around and seeing that other people are charging less and and that's another sign to me that that there's this conflict going on and and it's because what we see and experience out in the world is a reflection of the things that we have that need to be healed in ourselves. So it's just it's just a reflection um, of your belief. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's um, go into other other examples of how. Gee, I don't know. Maybe it is a problem. Other symptoms that we see. Other other presenting issues that we see. Yeah. Uh, another one that I see is boundary breaking. Okay. Yeah, what do you mean? Um, what does that mean? A- agreement chaos. So in other words, I say ahead of time, okay, I set up my practice, I've got my agreements, there's a 24-hour cancellation policy, there's this agreement, there's going to be a contact and emergency, there's going to be payment up front, or whatever my agreements are, and we're not saying which ones are right or wrong. In the MBA program, we do go over ones we recommend that very strongly. But on this show for right now, we'll just say that you have whatever agreements that you have. Um Oh, it starts showing up, and not on a, every once in a while, but on a fairly regular basis, that people continue to break agreements and that you continue to bend boundaries. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll allow that to happen, I understand. And it's not a once in a while thing, but it's actually a fairly regular thing that's starting to point to an internal problem and an internal lack of resonance with your standards, with your agreements that you set up for a thriving practice that works for you energetically right. and financially and every other way. You right. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's another one? You got another one for me? Yeah, another another symptom, presenting issue, signs, what have you, that you are you are in conflict with this is that your EFT practice is your avocation and you speak to people about it as your avocation and your passion but you also have a day job because you feel you actually need to pay your bills with your day job and there's no way in your mind you can even come to the 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 the, the true feeling that you can and will be able to sustain yourself um with your EFT business right so i hear this i hear this all the time a lot yeah mm-hmm. That, that transition. Uh, and I'm not saying that there's not a transition for people from a primary day job as they grow their EFT business and practice. We're not saying there's any problem with that whatsoever. No, but no, we actually, we actually two encourage year, two that. Two years, three years, yep. four years down the line, 
<laughs> and it's yeah. still holding on to this because the practice is still insufficient because of underlying factors and, and lack of congruence, then it's a problem. Absolutely. Absolutely, especially if if you're if you're if you really if there's some sneaking suspicion that gee this might be what I'm meant to be doing this is my this I I would be fulfilling my purpose and my mission in life right. if if I were to be doing this full time right 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 now now the other issue that I want to address you know I mentioned at the beginning is um, in helping to get clarity with this issue one is can we be very clear that an EFT practice is a special is a spiritual practice and so you know let's this get was a wonderful what is the spiritual yeah, that, practice this was a wonderful practice doing this um, I enjoyed doing this with you very much Alina so we listed what are the qualities or what are some of the qualities of a spiritual practice and I'll start off with one it's a practice so that means that there's some kind of action that's done with consistency and regularity right like a meditation you, practice, like a uh, a ritual that you have, a lighting of candles, of attending mm-hmm. some community service, re, you yeah. know, a church or synagogue or mosque, or so right. it, it's it's something that you do on a regular basis, and that's why it's called a practice. Okay, how about that when you practice it? you bring an intention of connecting to something greater than yourself, that there's mm-hmm. some larger, call it God, call it the matrix, call it the universe, whatever you want to call that, there's something that you're connecting that's greater than just your ego, per se. Yeah? So yeah, that would be an that, aspect of the spiritual yeah, and that practice. Could, and that could, look like, that could look like going for a walk in nature. I know many people that to for whom that is their spiritual practice is the 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 feeling and the intention behind the walk is to connect with nature, to connect with spirit, God, source. Um, so it could look many many different ways. You know what? I'm going to just change strategy. We're going to kind of go through all of these and then go look. This is exactly what's happening in your EFT practice. But I'm going to shift for a moment and I'm going to take each one that we do. And you tell me as you're listening. Is that something that you bring to your EFT practice? So we went over the first one, that there's a regularity and consistency to practice. Hopefully that is something in your EFT practice. Are you bringing an intention to an EFT session with yourself or your client that's in the attempt to connect to something greater, some greater force of healing, something that's beyond just their, your and their ego? Absolutely, I hope so. And the third one we'll say is you're bringing forth the quality to your spiritual practice quote unquote your EFT practice of presence of mindfulness of bringing your full attention and energy to the moment in a spiritual practice and in an EFT session I hope so give me another one or two Alina go ahead yes that there's a quality of heartfulness of loving kindness of having it be heart centered Mm -hmm. absolutely Mm-hmm. How about that when you do that practice, it's performed with the highest of your own personal integrity and authenticity. You're bringing your truest self to that moment of spiritual and or EFT practice. Yeah? What yeah. else? Um, that you have a sense of calling or mission or purpose or, or it, that there's something about it that, that has brought you to this practice. So some people find their their true spiritual practice from a set of synchronicity or set synchronistic events or that they start on a path of learning and find that there is there's a sense of it being a calling. Mhm. And how many I hear that all the time um when we work with our EFT practitioners that you know the universe opened and they were given this gift and they found EFT and it was like they were meant to, be, to find it and meant to offer it to others. We hear that a lot. Um, how about that by practicing this practice, this path, that there's some sort of expectation or hope or inspiration that the practice will somehow bring about a sense of personal growth or evolution or personal development and potentially even a transformation, a movement toward enlightenment, a movement in that direction of development and 
I know that for my spiritual practice, that's part of my intentionality, and I know that in my EFT practice, that absolutely is what occurs. Yeah? Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, okay. given all of those things, mm-hmm. I think that it's very clear that absolutely one's EFT practice can be a spiritual practice, and now we really need to move into, okay, well, how do we then correlate that with being able to have it also as a business at the same time. So the question is, how do you reconcile that? How do you reconcile that it's both a spiritual practice and EFT practice in a business? And really the question becomes is, how do you resolve this? That your practice has to have some form of an equal energy exchange so that both parties are getting what they need to be able to heal, to thrive, to be vibrant, to be able to be philanthropic in their energy and time and money for others. So how is the energy exchange between you and your client? How do we create that so, so that it will sustainably continue in a way that you'll be able to offer your services to the world who needs you? Well, if you can't have a business that allows you to be able to pay your bills as a bare mm-hmm. minimum, mm-hmm. let alone to be able to have an overflow to give to the charities that need that to be able to give to you know so that we can bring EFT to the Philippines for example so that we can have that overabundance to be able to be philanthropic and give away time and energy and tithe that way and be able to be financially thriving so that we can be happy healthy whole and be able to give away we need to have some sort of equal energy exchange don't you think absolutely and and how about sustaining your not only yourself but your family, your friends in need, your community. I mean, it's one of the things that we have really loved about being as successful successful as we have been is the ability to really give back uh, in a major way to our community because we love it. And so the more that you can ease into this idea um, that you are that you are fulfilling your mission while Doing well and thriving is a win-win for all. Absolutely. And, you know, really, and, and the truth is, can't any activity that we perform, can't, and a business is an activity, right, lots of activity, can it be a spiritual practice just depending on what you bring to it? Yes. You know? We were having a wonderful conversation um, this last weekend with a with. A person that we consider a mentor. We were in Boulder and just had a lovely dinner, and and she was explaining that um, her partner is part. Uh, he decided that for a spiritual uh, a, a project that he had to do to for a for a course to complete the course um, and become ordained, he decided to take his ordinary job working in a produce department and imbue everything with a sense of spirit. So he'd go in and bless and intend and bring all of this energy into every little detail of every single grape, of every single peach, of every single display, and the energy of the lighting that came in. The whole department, just imbue it every moment of every day while he was there with this 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 presence this this spiritual energy and what was the result so of what him happened? doing what that, happened? that that private practice that that quiet practice to himself what happened yes the <laughs> the, it, the department the, yes right. go ahead the de- the department um was had a record breaking Month, not only for their store, but for every single store in the country. <laughs> so, so you know, I, I, what does this tell yeah. you? And you know what? What uh, the result of that is that the highest quality of produce was be able to brought to the community, which was supporting local farmers that were doing things organically and obviously non-GMO. So it was a win for the spiritual practice, it was a win for the store, it was a win for the employees, it was a win for the community, it was a win for the farmers. So we have to look at how do we bring that grace, that sense of grace, that sense of divinity, that sense of 
of gifting, that sense, all that beauty that we bring to our businesses and our practices is such a huge gift. And we also create a template that other people can see that and then use that template for themselves. Yep. I, you know, I wanted to add that every time that somebody is doing EFT with another, you know, I think, I don't want to say we take it for granted, but we know on a deep level and we watch that healing that's happening in that person. And we even have some sense of how it might be changing and healing the lives of their spouse and of their children and their extended family. And perhaps we even hear a story about it maybe affecting um, and creating healing in a relationship at work with an employee, with a fellow employee or a boss or a friend. But you know what? On um, I had just posted, and this is just perfect, on EFT Tapping Training, an article on the tra- transgenerational potential effect of the work that we do. What does that mean? Is that when we start to look at the studies regarding epigenetics and trauma, for example, and we start looking at how when we create healing and or trauma, either way, when we create these changes in our lives, they epigenetically alter the expression of our genes. So not only when we're doing healing are we affecting ourselves, we are affecting the next generation and inherently the generation after that. So when you look at your work as a spiritual practice, you are not just by any means affecting only the person in front of you. You are creating a legacy that goes on for generations. This is a healing that goes on. This is spiritual work, and we also need to be able to be compensated so that we can continue to do this work. It's so important. So what gets in the way of you knowing that? on a really deep cellular level. What limiting belief are you carrying that prevents you from receiving the gifts in return for assisting this ultimate purpose of healing people on the planet or creating creating a space that offers that healing? Mm-hmm. Alina, what do you and think that gets in the way for people? Yeah, well, well. so if if you find that you are giving your services away constantly, if people tend to treat your services with a lesser with lesser value, they don't value it. If more, if people are breaking agreements with you, if they're trying to bend the rules, if um, if you have if you're feeling the sense of resentment or a feeling of just feeling drained, not energized by your practice, then what we would say is that ultimately, what's happening is. Not so much that you're having a con. You, it's not necessarily that you're having a conflict about this being spiritual or not. But many times, what this is doing is masking, right? It's masking a much deeper issue that you have around money, money issues. It's covering up a deeper dysfunctional relationship with money. Yes. Absolutely. So that you, it, could, really, it could be that you don't value yourself enough. It could be that what you feel you're offering doesn't feel like it's enough. It might be that you feel that you don't deserve a lot of money. So all of these things are just the feeling that it's spirituality and my, and my business don't match or spirituality and asking for the money that I, I need to live well don't match is really just kind of the the surface and what we have found when we start to dig, for instance in our in our the money course that we teach, um, it always shows up as some some underlying uh belief around money period. And uh, it shows up in many different ways, lots of them we've just discussed. Yeah, you know, that's a real that's like an ouch. Um you know, yeah. it's a, it's, I, I, want, I want to step really sensitively on that because if somebody, you know, it's like working with a client with psychological reversals, right? In other words, if I'm really holding that, you know, my practice is as being a spiritual service, but underneath that is an old wound, is an old belief that is averse to money, and therefore it shows up for me as a very strong determination and declaration of EFT being a spiritual practice and therefore I shouldn't get money for it, that can be a hard one to unwind for people, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. a really important one to look at. Mm-hmm. And um, so, I, so I just want to be sensitive to that and also know that it might not be an easy one to untangle at first, but you know, I know of no better way to untangle it than by using tapping. Um, do you have any tips 
Actually, Alina, I'll ask you, what would be your best tips for somebody that's working with this issue to untangle it to use tapping to undo? So so actually, I would say list how it shows up in your practice. What are some of those symptoms that we discussed? Go back and listen to this again and see what symptoms do you have or showing up in your practice that are just indicating that there is something off. And then ask yourself, what are your beliefs around money that then um, kind of buttress that and hold, prop those up as a, as nothing more than a belief. And we know what we can do with beliefs. We can just simply change them. So um, what we what we do in the EFT MBA course is offer, as, as part of tuition, a wonderful class that we teach several times a year called the Money Mindfulness Mastery Class. And it really does get to the heart of what's going on in your relationship with money. Because we find that even when EFT coaches are making six figures, if they do not have their money house in order, if they do not have a good relationship with money, that money will disappear or, you know, they'll they'll get a $20,000 contract and the next day they'll need a new car. So those kinds of things show up when you haven't healed your money, your, your money issues. So just a reminder, our EFT MBA semester, the the enrollment period is drawing down. There are only 10 days left to sign up and be part of this. It, we've got an amazing group from all over the world that we're working with now. We'd love to have you part of it. Go fill out an application and let's see if it's a right fit for you and for us, for you to be part of this group. Go to EFTMBA.com. And just mm-hmm. to summarize... And if you're interested... Yeah, no, that's fabulous. It has all the work and how we work individually with people in God. We have just a great international group right now. And the tapping, the tapping and the breakthroughs that are that have started happening within the first week because we just got it started, I'm just blown away by. Yeah, it's and fantastic. It's just, so anything um, interested, to summarize, oops, let's, anything can be a spiritual activity along a spirit, a, a, anything, because we are spirit having this human experience and anything that you're doing can be a spiritual path. This is especially true for EFT coaches because the work that we do intrinsically creates healing, physically, emotionally, spiritual healing that can bring peace to a community, a nation, or the planet one person at a time, ultimately bringing a sense of heaven here on earth. And we want to support you in that. We do. All right. We made it within 30 minutes. We Absolutely. A lot. Great. We just love getting your feedback. People loving the shows. Please, you can make comments here um, on the link below on the EFT Tapping Training site. You can find, uh, look up EFT Tapping Training and Workshops on Facebook and post things there with ideas and comments. We love hearing from you. Um, we look forward to hearing you at our next show. Alina, you want to kind of hint to where we're going next time? Ooh, Yeah. Something really dear and dear to my heart, which is um, conflicts with being a woman, especially, and being an EFT coach. So should wow. be really good. Great. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks again, for joining us. And keep on tapping, keep everybody. On tapping. <laughs>